Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I am going to play a 1510 game. Let's start out with D4. Opponent's rating for this game is 1054. Finest piece ever. Okay. D4, D5 game. Let's put some pressure on the center, the flank pawn. Okay, so Queen's Gambit accepted. I'm going to start with Knight F3. This is a move I want to prevent. My opponent was just in pre-move mode, which is kind of surprising considering it's an increment game. If I just moved E3, or maybe even e4. Um, actually, I think after after e4, this may be a move. So I just want to simply develop my knight to f3 and stop any e4 advance. I can't play e4 now. And I do want to make sure I get this pawn back as soon as possible. So e3 is almost certainly going to be played any other move? Not really. I don't want to try and track down the pawn with the queen. E3 is a good follow-up. Just looking to regain the pawn. And develop. Can't ask for too much more. Alright. This pawn is unprotected. I could simply regain the pawn now. I am in a pin. Not too concerned about questioning the bishop just yet. Let's just make sure I capture this pawn. And in fact, I'm threatening some tricks now with knight e4. Bishop takes queen. Could be met with bishop takes f7 checkmate. And we may see that right now. So I actually have two pleasant choices. To either take on f7 with check, and after king takes to then play knight to e5, winning the bishop, because it would be hit twice, or to first play knight e5. And which one is objectively best? I'm thinking it's the forceful approach, because if I play this one first, Black does have the option to not take my queen and instead bring the bishop back to e6. Which is very ugly because after takes there's going to be double isolated pawns, but I haven't won a pawn. Okay. I may want to also consider, let's see, if I play this and bishop to e6... Bishop takes, pawn takes, maybe then queen b3. As mentioned earlier, b7 is unprotected. My queen would be hitting both of these points. However, there is a convenient reply in queen d5. Offering a queen exchange and defending both b7 and e6. So what does this mean? I think it means best is to first take on f7. King takes, knight e5, check. And then simply win the bishop. So as soon as this move was played, something black could have already been saying to themselves was that f7 is unprotected, one attacker, one defender. Okay. I think would have what would have been better than g6 is e6. Yeah, I'm going to go with what I, I feel is objectively best. That is to take on f7. Even though this may tempt a lot of players to go ahead and take that queen, I think this is the correct way to approach it. Not looking to play uh, hope chess. Alright, so we have the follow-up. Just finishing this tactical sequence. Uh, my knight could end up 
a little bit clumsy in a way on g4 if the knight exchange is ducked. Um, may run the risk of, you know, some h5 idea, but is there something better here, actually? Uh, this this move is kind of crossing my mind, but no. Still this idea to play queen d5 and stop any queen f7 move is there, so I guess we simply get the piece back and, okay, so they are taking. I think, you know, to try and put up more resistance there is black, probably best to keep the tension and maybe carry on with development. Because however slight this is, I'm now able to recapture and improve a piece. So it's it's moves like this. You know, if I'm playing as black, that move. I would think twice about doing that because if my opponent's able to recapture and move forward, it's usually an improvement. Okay, so I am currently up upon... My opponent is uncastled. This bishop's going to have a tough time coming out. What might this knight be looking to do next? Possibly this move. But I'm not, I'm not too concerned about that. I really don't think there's a better square than c3 for the knight. I don't think it's worthwhile to invest two tempi to get to f3. This is a, an excellent square for a knight, but you factor in the time, I don't know that it's really worthwhile. Um, I wonder. This move is crossing my mind to stop the pawn from advancing, but I would expect the queen to be challenged. If I play knight c3 and then e5 is in, I guess I could follow up with the d5. And uh, there is a way I could go wrong with knight c3, e5 takes, knight takes, hitting my queen, and then there's going to be this check, and my king is going to be uncastled. I don't want that. I want to just castle. But I think, I think first just this one, and on this I could play here, and on that move, then I could castle. I'm not too concerned about this hitting. It's just one piece attacked once I'm castled, so... I'm going to go with knight c3, queen knight on c3, king knight on f3. Ideal squares. However, with a queen knight, in many cases you'll want to make sure you're not really obstructing a c-pawn in, in d-pawn based openings. c-pawn likes to be on c4 before knight c3. All right, so here we are. I think this is a, a good try, and I think I do well to not take on e5 and carry on with d5. Also worth noting, the bishop is defending a knight jump into b5. Okay, so a retreat. Some pressure on this pawn. This is the first move that crosses my mind. I guess this is another mixing defense with attack. Um, if this... I open up my bishop size. I do a good job controlling the knight. And if I control the knight, I control the bishop. Can't get out. However, after e4, I'm wondering about this e6 move. Maybe... Maybe in reply to e6 there, then I could play queen here. Yeah, that's looking like the correct way. Um, yeah, I think I like this idea. It's uh, very healthy. I like having a pawn control, an enemy knight. So I'm still up the pawn. Now with this last move, I could even start to view the position as, you know, I have the, I have a better bishop. These pawns are now fixed. We have some definition in the position. Um, good bishop. Ties in well with my fixed center pawn on a light. Okay, so the knight is looking to reroute to a better square. 
I am on move. Bishop g5 is tempting. But as mentioned, I do have the better bishop. And if this move is played, I think that is a convenient reply. And I don't know that I really want to go for a dark square bishop exchange. So I think I just want a castle. Let's castle. A knight to f6, I could fall back. This is a cozy square. And what's running through my mind now is how to activate my rooks. I'm also looking for a stable square for my queen. So e6 could be challenged with a queen. I mean, I wouldn't mind a queen exchange. But in having the safer king, I think I want to maybe try and get at this guy. Uh, let's see. Queen e2, queen e6. Yeah, if this, there's probably that. Queen takes, bishop takes. You could go into an ending. But maybe. No, I, I actually come to think of it, after queen to e6, there's bishop d6, and then my queen is going to be kicked away. She's. It's a very active square, but I'm not really tied in with any other white piece. So I think I'm just going to fall back to a, a comfortable square and stay out of my f pawn's way. I have this on my mind. And I think I want to play it right now. At the same time, some check to make. I am vulnerable on this diagonal, but this isn't really going anywhere after king h1. No other black piece is able to quickly tie in with it. Like there's no follow-up knight g4, so I think this is healthy. Opens up a file for my rook, maybe even looks forward to playing f5. Something's going to open. Okay, how to recapture. With the piece, the bishop. Yeah, what piece? The bishop. Okay. Right, that's sensible. I do have now an unopposed center. Two to zero. I'd like to give this knight a push, but I'd be dropping this. I could set that up, activate my queen rook. This is the only piece that's currently not playing. I didn't have to make any moves with my rook for it to contribute, just pawn play with f4. So I could consider a battery looking for some material. Now let's not forget about this too. Maybe even consider bishop to e5. Trying to do something on the pin, although after that move, I don't know where I'm going. Okay, this rook isn't doing anything. Uh, let's get it doing something. Let me, let me check this, this, and then knight here is not really working because there's knight takes bishop. To get out of the pin, rook takes queen, knight takes queen check. So let's just defend d5 directly. And this now sets up e5. This is a passed pawn, after all. My e pawn. And now they are walking right into e5. I, I could play this, and there isn't any fear of a pin. Because I could take the knight with check, so. Yeah, that one's coming. So, oh, you know what? I'm not winning material because the bishop gets out with check. My mistake. <laughs> yeah, but this is still good. But uh, I was mistaken to think I'm winning material. Okay, I am winning material. The bishop check was not spotted, so... Probably going to win even more material. I don't think there's anything better than taking the knight with check. This could hit. Yeah. So bishop to e5, pieces on the same diagonal. This guy's eyes light right up. The check isn't anything. 
And this one's officially collapsing. Just a material plus. Really no concern about counterplay in a position like this. The conversion shouldn't be too difficult. Up the material. Okay. And... I don't think it really matters. I guess... I guess I'll take with the pawn. This isn't going anywhere. I like to keep those pins for as long as possible. Until my opponent has to expend a move to get out of it. It's only then I'll consider more closely the capture. Okay, so... I'm gonna take with the rook. And this sets up a discovery. Okay, so I feel like it should be checkmate in just a handful of moves. This rook is no longer needed on d1. This is the better file. Let's get there. I can't move my bishop. Um, I could play here. There's a queen check, but I have bishop lock. I'm going to go in for this one. I don't mind giving up both rooks for the queen at this point. Okay, and earlier I was pointing out king h1, but I do have a counter-attacking move, and I should be going with that. Sort of get the move back. And now this is nearby. And it should be mate in just a few. Where's the mate? I think you start with that one. This queen takes bishop. Not seeing the, not seeing the mate, like a for a forceful mate. Check here, check. And it's unnecessary to really calculate any of that. I think just one simple move of getting the a second major piece to the seventh rank, and there's now multiple mate threats. Check, checkmate. Yeah, we'll go with that one. It is double check. I know, that's unnecessary. A single check is fine. Got mate there, mate there. Okay, however you slice it. Okay. A good game. I'm typing my way. Or typing my opponent's way. Let's have a look at this one. Analysis board. And let me do a computer analysis real quick. We'll get to see the the accuracy for both sides. And I think mostly I was able to share everything I wanted to throughout this game. Queen's Gambit accepted. And it was just an opening error right here. I mean, this is, this is a fine move. It's not considered best. Uh, best is normally this idea to play e6. And a6 with the idea of playing next on the queen side with the b4, c5 ideas. So as an example, e6, I regain the pawn. And then a5, or excuse me, a6. Let's say I castle. Then there's b5 or c5, suggesting c5 first. But I don't think there's anything super wrong with that one. You know, prefers... I guess maybe if you're doing this a little too soon, you may be subjected to an, a quick a4. So this idea to challenge the center with the flank pawn is there. And this is still a possibility, but this is this is the more uh, accurate, more... Uh, yeah, the more accurate approach. But as played right here, as soon as this guy's here, to view that as unprotected, it should, it should definitely grab black's attention. e6 is the move to play. After that one, it should just be over from that point on. Um, again, as, as mentioned, knight here is tempting, but bishop to e6. You know, if that, then we'd have a quick mate. But, yeah, it is 
considered queen b3, even queen b3. I could have considered that wasn't on my mind. It's just torn between these two. And it should just be downhill from there. It really isn't. It's just an opening error. In the end, 95 accuracy, 84% accuracy. Okay, just a 15-10 game against finest piece ever. Uh, that's about it for this one. Feel free, as usual, to leave any feedback to this video in the comment section below. Hope you enjoyed it and maybe took a thing or two away. That's all for now. Take care. Bye.